Hey there, welcome to American Roots Music. My name is Kalia Yeagle, and I'm gonna be your instructor for this online course through the Department of Appalachian Studies. I'm a musician, and I primarily play old-time music, especially the fiddle, and I spend a good amount of the year touring with my band around the country and around the world. I have a lot of hands-on experience with American Roots Music and a unique perspective on how diverse and wide-reaching the music can be and how beautifully it can invite us into, you know, one person's unique story, their experience on their front porch or in their living room. Or it can tell us stories about collective music making experiences, whether that be work songs or religious music or community organizing that involves music. American Roots music can also teach us more broadly about American cultures and change. And, you know, who knows, you might find some artists that you'll end up listening to on Spotify for years to come. Here's hoping. Uh, please take a look at the syllabus, particularly the included course schedule, and get familiar in general with the course content modules here on D2L. That's where this course lives and breathes, so it's really important to get familiar with it sooner rather than later. Right now, I'm going to highlight seven important things I think you need to know about this course. Number one, this is a survey class, and it's intended to give you a broad overview of concepts related to folk and roots music in the United States. Number two, you'll need to stay current with the weekly assignments, and I won't allow end of semester makeup work. Number three, we're gonna be relying heavily on a book by Kip Lornell, Exploring American Folk Music. Um, you need to pick this up as soon as you can because we're gonna hit the ground running. If you don't have a copy right now, I will have the first chapter scanned in the course content for that week, for week one. Um, but after that, uh, you're going to need to have the textbook in order to succeed. I would encourage you to take some time to get familiar with the layout of this book. For example, you might notice that at the end of each chapter, there's a list of vocabulary terms that you should be familiar with. Um, and they're also bolded in the text itself. So make sure you know what these words mean and why they're important, because they're going to be a part of the quizzes and the tests that you'll take throughout the class. Number four. The discussion board assignments for each week will ask you to synthesize and comment on the concepts that you're studying. It's a good idea to review these questions before you read so that you'll know what you should be thinking about as you go. For example, in chapter one, um, that's gonna discuss some ba basic vocabulary that you'll use to describe the music that we're studying. If you don't know how to define terms like pitch, rhythm, syncopation, genre, or the other words in this chapter, make sure that you take the time to explore those terms and understand what they mean and understand what they refer to musically. You might need to reference outside sources to get a good feel for some of these words. Um, of course, Wikipedia is a fine place to start, but it's not considered authoritative for papers and other academic research. Number five. We'll be doing a lot of listening this semester. The book presents representative listening examples of the artists and genres that we're studying. And many of these or examples similar to them are included in the week's course content page. So you should see a folder each week that's called listening or something like that. And you should refer to these examples as you read about them. Uh, they're identified by chapter in the list. Number six, as part of the course requirements, you're gonna attend at least one live concert during the semester and write a brief report about it. You can go to any kind of American folk music concert, so start looking around and see what's available in your area. Like everything else, details for this assignment are on the course content page. And finally, number seven, each of you will prepare a term project as part of this course. You'll find the instructions for this project on the content page as well. And I'd say you should start brainstorming potential topics and get started as soon as you can. Uh, one thing to note is that there will be a few required meetings with me or with a small group of classmates where you will present your project idea um, and also your progress midway. And for that, we're gonna use an online software called Zoom, which you all have access to through your ETSU email address. And we'll talk about that a little more as those dates get closer. So if you haven't already, please make sure to read through the syllabus and the other important information within the course content module so you'll know exactly what the expectations are for this semester. And if you have any questions or concerns, always feel free to email or call me 
or stop by my office if you're on campus. I'm over in Sam Wilson, tucked away in the bluegrass old time and country music practice rooms. I'm excited to dive in with you all and I'll see you soon.